Thanks, everybody. That first piece was from Tunisia. Are you guys ready to uh, see some dancing? So the next piece we're going to do is from Egypt. And Egypt had a really great period in the mid-20th century where they made a lot of movie musicals. So this is a dance piece from a movie musical made in Cairo in Egypt in 1950. It starred a dancer called Tahia Karaoke. And we are going to welcome our dancer, Layla Isis. <laughs> Isis, everybody. So as I said, we did our, our first our first piece was from Tunisia, the second piece was from Egypt. We're going to give you a sample of music from around the Middle East today. So I have a question for everybody. Can anyone tell me what continent the Middle East is on? Yes. Asia. Anyone else with a different answer? Africa. Anyone else with a different answer? Europe. So you're all right. The Middle East sits in between Asia, Africa, and Europe. And as a result of being there, it's been the crossroads from people from all over the world for thousands and thousands of years. The earliest civilizations, ancient Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt, started in the Middle East. And you have people coming from 
Asia, Africa, and Europe all throughout this history. The ancient Jews, Romans, Greeks, Africans, eventually the Arabs out of the Arab Peninsula, Turks and Mongols from Asia, and eventually Europeans coming in. So all of these peoples brought their various cultures to the Middle East, and they created a culture that has layers and influences from all these different people, and that includes the food, the fabric, the traditions and cultures, and of course, the music that we're presenting for you. So it has little bits and pieces from all over the world, from all over the old world, as we call it. So I want you to keep that in mind as we go around the Middle East, that it has something from so many different peoples built into it. So we're gonna pass it off to Nazi, who's gonna tell you a little bit about percussion and show us something from Turkey. Hi, good morning everyone, how are you doing? Yeah. So I brought two different drums today. Uh, one is that you have already heard, it's called the Darbuka, or the Derbaki, or the Tabla, or in the US it's called the Dumbek. It's played in many different countries, and so it has many different names. Um, all around the Middle East, Eastern Europe, North Africa. So I'm gonna demonstrate the variety of sounds you can produce with it, and I'm gonna show you the, the other drum I brought. So this is the tabla, also called tabla in Egypt. And uh, I have a tambourine, which is called the rek in the Arab countries. Um, I, want you to show a, I want to show you a rhythm, which is a very old Ottoman rhythm in a cycle of 10 beats. Can everyone and, count uh, to 10? So I want you to count to 10 and clap on the first beat and on six and on seven. Are you ready? Yes. All right. So we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Keep counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.
job. Great job. You guys are the best group so far. <laughs> so we're going to move from Turkey to Iraq, and Amir over here is going to tell you a little bit about his instrument. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you very briefly about uh, the music of Iraq. So of course, uh, many of us have gotten used to seeing Iraq on the news uh, throughout the last 10, 12, I don't know, a couple of decades. It's been a uh, very difficult time uh, in that part of the world. Uh, politically and uh, in terms of daily life of people, but um, there is a very, very rich uh, cultural offering that Iraq has. Can anybody, does anyone know the name of what modern day Iraq was, was called in ancient history? The name, yes, in the far back? Persia, it's next to Persia. I'll give you a hint, it means between two rivers. Um, it starts with an M. Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia, yes, yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah, so, so um, Mesopotamia is where a lot of a lot of modern day things that we sort of take for granted, like you know, 24 hours in the day, 60 minutes in the hour, 60 seconds in the minute, etc., etc., um, as well as the earliest forms of writing. Um, many of the, the earliest musical instruments come from this part of the world. And this is one of the instruments that was invented in uh, during one of the, the second Babylonian era, roughly a thousand years BC. So this is a three thousand year old. Well, this instrument actually is about twelve years old, but the santur is the name. It was invented about three thousand years ago. I'm going to kind of hold it up like this because it's a little bit difficult to, to grab. It's heavy, but these are all strings. There's about ninety six of them. I'm going to. That's what they sound like if you play them all at the same time. Um, so, and they are tuned uh, to various pitches in the um, Arabic scale. Uh, so I'll just give you a brief um, demonstration. While I'm playing, maybe you can think about if this instrument, because uh, it's actually the ancestor to some modern day instruments, maybe you can think about it if it reminds you of any particular instrument that you've seen or heard. ancestor of the modern day piano. So this is called the Santur. Um, and we're going to play a brief piece from Yara. This one's called Maqam Rashdi.
Some more dancing. So we're going to move from Iraq back to the United States. This is a, a modern composition by myself. Uh, so you get an example of some contemporary Middle Eastern music being composed right here in the United States. Please welcome back Layla Isis. <laughs> Again, Layla Isis. Are you guys ready to do some singing with us? 
Can everyone sing? Uh, you guys can do a lot better than that. You know, the third graders were here yesterday and they sang, I can't even tell you how good they were. Uh, uh. So, in, in Arabic, when we like to improvise, we say, yeah, Leil. Can everyone say, yeah, Leil? Leil means night in Arabic, and we like to say that because most of the time we like to do Arabic music at night, not during the day. So repeat after me. Yalil. 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 You guys are doing great. I know it feels feels a little bit funny, right? You think you can't do it, but you can do it. Now you might think that note sounds a little bit funny. Uh, that's because in Arabic we have a lot of notes that don't exist in Western music. We have a lot of notes that fall in between the notes. So this third note of this scale uh, falls in between the notes of the piano, in between the major and the minor scale, for those of you who are interested. Yalil. Yalil. Yalili. Yalili. Beautiful. I'm going to sing a song from Syria about a fish. Yeah, 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 yeah
So we're going to move from Syria to Palestine, and Zafir is going to talk about his instrument over here. Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Zafir. Good morning. Good morning. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, this is the oud. Repeat behind me, oud. Oud. This is the oud is an instrument that exists in Egypt and the Levant area, Turkey, Egypt, the Gulf, and it's a half pear shape, as you see, half pear. Uh, um, it's made out of wood, and before they used to use gut strings, but today we have metal and nylon strings on it. I block it with this pick made out of horn, um, and it sounds like this. Would you like to hear the sound? Yes. Uh, oud. Say oud. Oud. This instrument. Oud. Yes. Okay. This is how it sounds. Medley of line dance songs from Palestine.
Welcome back, Layla Isis, for you. But before we do that, I need to switch instruments myself. Everyone knows what this is, right? Violin. So the violin, you may think, well, it's a little different than these two, but the violin has actually been used in traditional Arabic music for more than 150 years, much like it's made its way into other traditional world musics like Indian music, Irish music, etc. But the violin is actually descended, like the piano, from musical instruments from the Middle East, and I'm going to show you that in just one second. This instrument is called the rababa. Everyone say rababa. I don't need to make you say it like 10 times like Zafar, right? Just rababa. <laughs> so what is it made out of? Wood. What else? A coconut, right? So it's a very simple instrument. Wood spike through a, a coconut shell covered with fish skin. This instrument, the rababa, was brought to Europe in the Middle Ages where it was called the Rebek, where it became the ancestor of the viol family and eventually the European violin. So this instrument is still played in Egypt and other parts of the Middle East in folkloric music. And Layla is going to do a folkloric dance piece for us using a, a stick dance, so we call Raksa Asaya. Mm -hmm. Let me show you what this sounds like for a sec. Sounds a little bit like the violin, as you can probably hear. A lot of people think it sounds like a, a baby crying or a cat fighting another cat. Oh my God. Anyway, please welcome back Layla Isis.
حلوة يا شيخ المرواص من فضلك تمام سجيني يا حلوة يا شيخ المرواص من فضلك تمام سجيني ده قلبي حبك بخلاص زي ما حبك حبيني زي ما Thanks very much, everybody. So let me introduce everybody here in the band. We have Mr. Nazi Antakli on percussion. Mr. Zafar Tawil on oud and vocals. Amir El Safar on trumpet, centur, and vocals. And Layla Isis on dance. My name is Sami Abu Shamez, and our group is Zikrayat. Uh, it means memories in Arabic because we try to remember some older repertory and bring it forward. So thanks very much, and I think uh, we have some time for some questions. <laughs> 